So, Padre Kemi, does church really matter? The kind of church that the person goes, does it matter in choosing a partner? Let's talk about it. <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel my name is Friday Kemi if you're new here welcome if you're old here what's popping my jeans so today as you must have seen from the title below we are talking about the kind of church that someone goes to is it a red flag so your protestant the person is catholic or your deeper life the person is celestial you know or your you know like those really extreme kind of churches <laughs> is it a red flag are we allowed to still get married now this question is coming up because you know first of all it's natural when people um meet someone we say um the criteria is you must not be with an unbeliever don't be unequally yoked that's what scripture says but then the question is does that mean that you can be with any other believer now this is a very very interesting question because I've heard people say that, oh, you can be with any believer as long as the person is a believer. While some people have said, oh, you can be unequally yoked, even with believers. While I'm not even here to dissect that particular scriptural um, 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 scriptural backing, but I want us to use common sense, okay? Common sense, you know, this is a case in scenario. Now, you meet someone who, and I'm going to give three scenarios. The first scenario, yes, let me even start like that. There are three scenarios, right? The first scenario happened, the reason why I'm even doing this video is because of these three scenarios. The first scenario happened when I was having a conversation with someone who was not a believer. And in his own opinion, he was like, oh, Christians, we're too divisive, we're too separated, we have different doctrine, we have different beliefs, some Christians feel superior to some other Christians, and that's why he doesn't even think can be a part of it. And I said, I don't understand, what do you mean? And he told me, you now, can you marry a Catholic? And I said, no, I cannot. He said, you see, that's what I'm saying. And I said, okay, calm down. You're a Muslim, right? I, I don't I don't like to mention other religions, but for this scenario. So I told him, you're a Muslim, right? He said, yes. I said, you believe that women should cover their hair? He said, yes. I said, great. Since you believe that women should cover your, their hair, if you meet a woman who is, you know, she's nice, she's homely, she's everything, she has this very great character. But you're a very strong believer. That is, you're a very strong Muslim man, right? So you meet her and, she tell, and you tell her that, oh, the Quran says cover your hair and she says well I don't believe in covering your hair I think covering hair is old school what will you do will you marry her and then he said mm. and then he saw my point now this one is not that the lady is saying um, I'm still struggling to you know cover my hair I'm still hoping that God gives me more iman <laughs> Sorry that I'm using Muslim terms, but that's what they say. This one, she's blatantly saying, no, you instead, men should lower their gaze. And it is old school to cover your hair. This one, you know that both of you, your beliefs are fundamentally different. So tell me, how can you go ahead with that kind of person? So saying that, and I proceeded to tell him that it's the same thing. I cannot get married to someone that I'll be telling the person, no, I don't believe we should honor Mary. And the person will say, honor Mary. So it's not that I'm saying that, oh, they are bad people or they'll go to hell. It's not a judgment matter. It's a thing that I'm an adult, right? And I think I'm responsible for making a decision as powerful as who I should be getting married to. And I don't think anybody should be saying, oh, you're doing, you're being um, unfair. No, this is my marriage. This is what I'm going to get married into, right? You know, it's different when your parents are a particular religion or a particular, maybe they belong to a particular church and you don't agree with their doctrine. It's different you still be going because you are still under them but then when you make a decision by yourself as an adult that you want to get married into and then you make that same decision like and then you put yourself say well Allah. <laughs> that is the scenario right so that's why it's important that you also have to actually check the kind of church to be sure right so someone also hit me up telling me that um and this is the second scenario someone hit me up telling me that um I think she's she's protestant person is catholic that she was trying to date or something i'm not going to give all the details of the story but yeah something like that happened and i was like look you have to actually have a conversation after you get married which church will you go to if you're one of those people who do not care maybe you're just a passive christian by all means right but when you know that you are chasing god 
And what's the probability that in the next five years you won't be chasing after God with passion and zeal? I mean, that's the prayer of every believer to grow more and more in their faith. So if you now go ahead and be with someone who is fundamental, whose um, beliefs are fundamentally flawed with yours, there is already a problem. So that's one of the things I told her. I said, you actually have the conversation, whose church will you go to after you get married? When they have the conversation, and you know, naturally in this side of the world, it's, it's not on this side of the world, I think naturally everywhere, people expect that, okay, you submit to your husband's church, right? Or both of you go agree on the church to go to. So now when you now say you or you that you have been speaking in tongues before, you have been, you know, you believe in healing, laying of hands, you believe in righteousness by faith, and then you now don't get married to someone that goes to a church that they don't believe in speaking in tongues. Or like, you, for example, you go to winners, then you got married a Jehovah Witness. Voila. <laughs> so it's not like they're bad people when you say, oh, you can't marry this kind of person. No, it's that you are going to be putting yourself in problem. You are going to be in wahala. Think of your future children, whose church would they now go to? Would you guys be having arguments like that at home? Do you see? So that's it. Now the third scenario happened with one of my mentees. We're having like a meeting and then she said that, um, do I think it's bad to want to, you know, marry someone that goes to your church? Because, you know, she really likes her church and all of that. And I said, I understand. Almost everyone that goes to a great church, they think that their pastor is the best thing since sliced bread. And I'm not saying this is slander pastor. I'm just saying that that's how everybody feels. When you go to a great church, you are addition you the word. There's healing. There's worship. There's a great service. Everything is just, you know, on hundred. There's a tendency to feel like your church is the best thing ever. Like nobody, no other church compares. You, you just be able to relate to only your own church. And then you feel like, ah, I wish everybody could hear my pastor. Now, so they do all of us. <laughs> But it doesn't mean that there are no other better churches. Now, it's okay to want to marry from your church. If you find someone in your church, great, congratulations. I'm happy for you, right? But if not, um, the thing is, I would say that don't put your um, feelings before the spiritual. So you meet someone, you guys have a conversation. And that's one of the things that, you know, I and my husband did when we first met. We had a conversation about faith. And so some people might be like, hmm, you're too spiritual. But me, oh, one of the things that really made me feel like, yes, this guy will get me, was because of his faith. Because my faith is a fundamental part of my life. And I cannot imagine getting married to someone who doesn't think the same things that I think. Now, we might have differing views in terms of other things. And those other things, so you have to decide if it's a red flag for you. Like feminism, who should wash plates, who should take care of the children, who should pay the bills. You should have those conversations, right? But for me, my faith was fundamental. So it was like, yo, if this person does not believe righteousness by faith, do we still need to beg for forgiveness of sin? Do we need to do this? Do we need to, like there are some things that if both of us don't agree on it, it's pointless. So that for me, both of us believed that same thing and it really, really helped us. So you have to decide that. And the thing is, we weren't even going to the same church. <laughs> That's it. So if you meet someone who you're not going to the same church, fine, but he believes fundamentally the same things that you believe. I don't think you should let go of a person, whether male or female, because the person is not your church. <laughs> That's a big problem. And a lot of pastors do this, actually. And I have heard of people who, like, blatantly, they will say, I cannot marry outside my church. Um, pastors who will not want to join you or who will try to create a ruckus because they believe that you should marry from your church. I think that's a great problem and we have to address it in the body of Christ. You guys comment below and tell me what do you think? Do you think you necessarily have to say you have a great church, everything is on par, do you have to marry from your church? Is there any rule? Like because there are churches that actually they believe you should only marry from your church. And I think that's a great problem. They're causing more problem in the body of Christ, okay? By all means, it's okay to wish that you marry someone from your church. It's okay to hope on it. But even if it doesn't happen, I think it's also okay. Now, when both of you now finally meet, um, both of you decide whose church are we going to go after we get married. Another important factor. Um, I'm not going to say, oh, you have to, like, from a female's perspective, I think the natural thing that other older females will say is, oh, it's normal for you to go to your husband's church, but it's not normal. Both of you have to pray about it. 
okay don't put the cart before the horse as i always say pray about it and decide that this is what god is leading us to do now god might not lead you entirely away from any of these churches right to another great church where both of you will serve where both of you may actually be needed because for example in your own church and his own church maybe your church is very big and you guys are not really working as broadcast like but now you can go to a smaller church and you guys will make more impact maybe on the younger people the teenagers the youth the young couple you guys might actually make greater impact in a different church than in the church that you go so don't always look at church as oh about you 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 it's more about kingdom like when i get to a space how can i influence how can i impact and sometimes in a smaller space you are able to do more than in a bigger space and sometimes also in a bigger space you are able to be seen more than in a smaller space so i'm not advocating for only small right i'm, I'm talking about just opposing it uh, alongside each other so i feel so i think that you know that's my own opinion now some of them might say that okay you say we should not marry someone whose belief is fundamentally but at least the person believes in jesus i think i can still go ahead again it is about you comment below guys tell me what you think let me let me just ask that okay tell me what you think you think that you can still try and go ahead if the person's um, church is fundamentally different from yours. I'm talking about like Celestial and like Winner's Chapel, like that kind of thing. Like, yeah, fundamentally, like you guys believe in like those people wear white, they don't wear slippers. You people, your own, you believe in faith, you know, all those kind of things. Comment below and tell me, can you go ahead in that kind of marriage? Or you're Catholic, the other person is a strong, say, redeem. Can you go ahead with that marriage? Comment below. But yeah, let me answer the question, right? Am I saying that, you know, is a total no, no, no. I think this one is more about opinion. Like, what works for you? Is, is your faith fundamental to you? Ask yourself that question. Like, in the three years now, almost three years now that we've been married, I and my husband have not had fundamental faith issues. And this is important because, for example, when you guys get married eventually, things will happen in the marriage where both of you have to agree. Do you see? For example, someone falls sick. Then someone, maybe the family member of the other party, calls and says, ah, there's one Baba, let me bring him, my prophet, let me bring his water. But because both of you believe fundamentally the same thing, you say no together, and your voice will be strong. But if one person believes something else, the other person believes something else, the other person will pass the back <laughs> and collect the water and cause problems. Because when a home is divided, there's already a problem. Right, they, the devil can sneak in through that means. So again, do you guys see the scenario I just painted? It's important. That's how I see it. Because I have seen it happen even in my own marriage where, you know, some things, maybe some interference from outside when they come. But because we believe fundamentally the same thing, it helps us. And then they'll say, ah, leave them. They are born again. Chaff, you won't let. <laughs> That's what I mean. Right, so you might say that okay, I don't mind if you don't mind, no problem, go ahead, but be sure that you don't actually mind, be sure that it is <laughs> it is not going to affect, right? But then again, there's also the place, there's also a space for change, you know. When you see a person, again, that's why I said it's about to each his own. When you talk to a person, maybe there are some Catholics now that they believe in speaking in tongues, there are some Catholics that believe in righteousness by faith, there are some people that are in Sele now that they believe that they don't just believe totally everything maybe they believe that they're just there because that's where they grew up and they can't go to somewhere else in the sense of it those ones you know that there's there's a tendency for change they know they they are open don't they, you know the best believers are actually the people that are open to learning the people that are open to unlearning to relearn so when you have conversation with this kind of people you know that okay this person you can still adjust but there are some people that you know that you cannot adjust don't deceive yourself right so some people can change along the way that's sure i mean like change their church change their beliefs i don't mean like someone that is beating you someone that is totally an unbeliever those ones is about may or may not you cannot be so sure right so with that said you guys tell me what your um thoughts are about this topic remember that you can ask me any question i'll leave my email in the description box and also you can ask me any question in the comment section any topic you want me to talk about we are going to talk about it right um so i hope that this um your question has really been answered if you are in this you know dilemma but apart from church you know there are other things to check even if 
you're with a believer the fact is you cannot be with every believer there are other things to check like is a person accountable to a local church so yes person might be going to a different church from you but you see the person going to church regularly does person believe in serving in his church or at church it's not the one that will be saying well i don't believe in all these church, church things it's me and my jesus ah run away oh. dangerous all the quite dangerous very very dangerous <laughs> because scripture is clear someone that reads their bible knows that the bible requires us to go to church someone that reads their bible knows that yes the church is greatly flawed because you know we're not perfect but christ is working in all of us and so even if one church you know offends you you can go to another one and just give your best right someone that is a believer a true believer knows that when we gather we are making power available when we gather we are doing the will of god right so there are other things to check you can also check the character of the person how is the person treating other people don't just look at how the person is treating you how does he treat other people how does he treat people that cannot pay him back how is he friendly you know there are a lot of things to check right okay so i don't want this video to be too long i hope it's not too long <laughs> i will see you guys in my next video remember to like give this video a thumbs up share comment let's keep the conversation going bye guys <laughs>